Hey guys, for guys, now this movie reviewing, this is a movie that I remember I talked about in the August movie preview, and it was a very, very indie movie. In fact, the first time I ever heard about the movie was in the August movie preview. I didn't hear any advertisements, I didn't really see anything for this movie, and I really didn't think this was going to be a movie that I get to see. I thought this was going to be one of those movies that, oh, it came out and not many people talked about it. But instead, everyone's been talking about this movie. I've heard so many things about it, and luckily it finally came to my theater. And that movie is a movie, like I said, that I didn't think I was going to see, but finally I've seen it, and that is Hell or High Water. I really didn't have many expectations going into this movie, even though I talked about the trailer and the plot. I thought the plot was interesting, but I just, like I said, didn't really have many expectations because I didn't really know a ton. A lot of people weren't reviewing it, but it's starting to get a lot of acclaim. And I've heard a lot of people say it's one of the best movies of the year, and I'm like, I, I gotta see this movie. I can't not see this movie when it's in my theater, and luckily I did see this movie. And after seeing this movie, I am so glad I saw it because Hell or High Water is by far one of the best movies I've seen so far this year. I think it is a western masterpiece. I really do love this movie, but it's not really a western. I'll get into why, but let's get to the plot of Hell or High Water, which I really do love the plot of this movie. Basically, we focus on these two brothers. Well, we focus on actually four different characters, but our main focus are on these two brothers, Toby and Tanner. Toby, played by Chris Pine, he is someone who he is not in the best state of, you know, mind and things like that. He has an ex-con brother, and he's also a divorced father who's trying to provide for his ex-wife and uh, his son because they need a new home, and they need to, you know, build a new home and everything, and they need money to obviously build it, and his brother is an ex-con, and they decide that they're gonna go around robbing banks in order to get money, and, uh, meanwhile, you have Jeff Bridges and the character of, um, um Gil, uh, Birmingham's character trying to track down these two brothers and basically trying to put an end to their crime, and that basically is a plot of Hell or High Water, and, I really did love the the uh, this movie overall. There are so many things to really love about it, but let's first get into the cast. Now, even though I didn't know much about going in this movie, I knew the cast here was very stellar, and that is absolutely the case. I really think everyone gave, gave a great performance, but let's talk about Chris Pine and Ben Foster, because they were two who I knew whatever was going to happen, they would be giving great performances, and that is absolutely the case. However, for me, out of the two, I think Chris Pine was the one that gave the better performance. I really loved his character as Toby, because this is a guy that he actually does have his shit together. Unlike his brother, he does have his shit together... He is a lot more calm, but he is someone where if you mess with his brother or if he needs to, he will, you know, do what he needs to do. You know, if he, there's a scene where someone's picking on his brother, he beats the shit out of them. I mean, he really is someone that you don't want to mess with and that you are very intimidated by, but you also understand why he's doing what he's doing. And that's something that's kind of hard to do, especially when you have someone robbing banks. It might be hard to get the motive, but I totally understood why he had to do what he wanted to do. This is a guy that's very family first. He very much wants to help his family. He wants to help himself as well, and it's really the only way he can provide for them, and I really love what he did here. He gave an incredible performance, and I really thought that he was fantastic. And then let's talk about Ben Foster, because Ben Foster is the more crazy, unhinged brother. This is a guy that is an ex-con. He, I think, takes things way too far at times, but it wasn't the acting that took that way too far. It's part of the character. Tanner himself is supposed to be a character where he does take things way too far and that he is very violent. So it went with the character. And I think in that regard, Ben Foster did a really great job because these two brothers really are just trying to help each other. And I really did love the way that was done. And even though Ben Foster was the older brother, Chris Pine at times, you're like, he's the older brother. He's the one protecting him. He's the one that's trying to keep him under control. And I really love both these characters did, but Ben Foster, you know, he's also, both of the brothers are extremely protective of each other. There's a scene, uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie, where this woman is hitting on Toby, and Tanner just goes right up to this woman, and basically just interrogates her, looks like he's about to beat the shit out of her, I mean, I really loved his character overall. I think the bond that these two had were fantastic. I think they both worked very well together, and you really bought that these two were brothers, and you really also understood, you know, why they're doing what they're doing, and like I said, it's kind of a hard um, thing to relate to, but you really did understand these characters. You really could get behind them, and because of that, that's one of the reasons why I really did love um, what they did here. However, by far, the highlight of this movie for me is actually not the two brothers. I think as good as they were, 
for me, the two highlights of this movie were Jeff Bridges and Gil Birmingham. I love these characters. I mean, these by far are some of my favorite characters of the year. Uh, Jeff Bridges especially. They were both so great and so funny. That's something I really wasn't expecting. This is one of the funniest movies I've seen all year. I'm not gonna lie. There was actually some generally hilarious stuff. I mean, there's so much great banter between not just the two brothers, but Mark, but Marcus and, um... Alberto, the two, uh, you know, uh, Gil Birmingham and Jeff Bridges, there's a lot of banter between these two, and it's honestly downright hilarious. I love what they did in the movie. I mean, Jeff Bridges, this is someone that's very experienced, and he really does know what he's doing, and he very much knows the town and things like that, and I really did love his character overall. And then Gil Birmingham, he's the one that's a little bit more unexperienced, and he's someone that clearly hasn't worked with him as much, and I really did love their chemistry overall. I thought they worked very well together. Like I said, there was some fantastic banter there, and especially in the last, I'd say, 15 minutes of this movie, Jeff Bridges really won me over. I really want to see him give more performances like this. I've been waiting to say, oh, Jeff Bridges was amazing in this movie, and I, like I said, I've really been waiting to see him give an amazing performance, and he finally gave me that performance. I truly think that he's Oscar-worthy in this movie. I really do. I think he was fantastic. He just killed every scene he was in, and I really think this is going to be Jeff Bridges' comeback movie. I love what he did here. And then Gil Birmingham, don't get me wrong, he was great too. I thought he did a great job. I thought they both worked very well together, but Jeff Bridges definitely was the highlight, not just of the two, but out of all the characters. I think Jeff Bridges really did give the best performance here. He was fantastic, and I really loved what he did here. So the cast here really is fantastic. I think they all really did a great job. But something else I really do want to praise the movie with is the directing here by David McKenzie. I think he did an incredible job with this movie. The best way I can describe the tone for this movie is justified as a movie. Because that's really what this reminds me of. I got a lot of justified type vibes from this movie. And you guys know one of the reasons I love Justify is because it knew when to take itself seriously and knew when to not. And that's something I think Dave McKenzie did very well here. This is not a movie that's serious all the way through. Like I said, this is a fun movie at points, and I really did have a lot of fun with it, and that's something I really thought was very well done. But when they get to the really dramatic stuff in the third act, which let me just tell you, it gets very dark very fast. Um, I think he did a really great job with that. I really thought... He really set the tone very well, and it really seems like he knows how to do westerns, and I really did like that. The screenplay here is by far one of my favorites of this year. I love the screenplay here. I think it was such a well-done story, and such a different story as well. I mean, I've seen stories like this, but the way it's done here, I think was so interesting, because just something like the title, Hell or High Water, is actually a deep metaphor into what the movie's really about, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but I think the screenplay here was so interesting. I really was invested in the story the entire time. I never was taken out of it, and I think they really developed these characters very well. I, I think some people might complain that the movie is a bit abrupt, and they don't really get to you, you know, develop these characters a lot, but no, I really think they did. I think in a few key scenes, because yes, the first two acts of this movie are, I wouldn't say action heavy, but there is a lot of action going on, um, but I think they do a very good job getting behind all these characters. They really let us develop them very well, and this movie really, this is one of those movies that just really small character moments, that's kind of the stuff I'm going to remember. Don't get me wrong, scenes where they're robbing the banks, I mean, they're riveting. They're some of the most intense stuff I've seen this year. But, I think some of the smaller character moments, like this really great scene in a casino with Chris Pine and Ben Foster, I think those are the scenes that really were my favorites. I really love what they do, especially the relationships between these two. They're one of the most important things about the movie, and I think they really showed that very well. I really did love that. By far, this movie has some of the best cinematography I've seen in a while. Um, you know, not just this year, but in a while. I mean, this really captures Texas very well. I'm pretty sure they did film in Texas, and just the wide shots of Texas and the western land, and just how crazy of a town that must be, I really love the way that was done, because it is very much a modern western, and you definitely did get that vibe here, and I really did um, like that from that movie, from this movie, but not only was it, I'd say, you know, a western type film, I'd say it's also a bit of a heist film, and you definitely did get that here. And that's something I really did love. I thought they really captured uh, just the, you know, the grittiness and, like, the ruggedness of Texas very well. And I really did appreciate that. I mean, you can definitely tell that Texas, it's, it's really not a clean town, obviously. There's always kind of crime and stuff going on. And that's something I thought was very interesting. Um... 
And I think the cinematography, like I said, was fantastic. I really did love it overall. And the score here I thought was great. I really did love the score. It's gritty, it's dark, and I thought it was perfect. And then the editing here, this movie flew by for me. I'm not going to lie. Like, when the movie ended, I'm like, wow, it's actually over. I couldn't believe how fast this movie flew by. And honestly, this was a movie that I really didn't think I was going to like as much as I did. I thought I was going to go into this movie and say I was bored by this movie, but I was not bored at all. And that's something they did so well here is that this movie could be boring but because it has that comedy and because of stuff like that you expect to be one way it's a completely different way i think that's what really makes this movie stand out is the tone and things like that and that's something i really did love here i think the editing this movie was very well paced it was never too long never too short i think every scene really did go as long as it needed to and that's something I really did appreciate. I really did love it overall, and uh, I, like I said, I think the editing here was fantastic. And the movie also really does have a great um, message, which it's a message a lot of movies do, but I think the message here is very good because in this movie, this is one of those movies where every action has some sort of consequence, and everything that these characters do is something that affects them throughout the whole movie. You know, things that you might not think are talked about as much and might be just be talked about a little bit are talked in much bigger detail as the the movie goes on and that's something I really did appreciate I thought was very well done here and I thought really did work in this movie but the next thing I want to talk about are the spoilers in this movie, which I didn't expect to say there are spoilers, but there are major spoilers in this movie. This is one of those movies where if you find out what happens in the third act of this movie, you might as well not see this movie because it really does ruin a lot. Now, luckily, I didn't know anything going in this movie, which really made the movie all the more better for me. I think it's one of the reasons I loved it as much as I did. But let's just get into the spoilers because there really is a lot to talk about. Now, you guys probably expect me to talk about a few key scenes. I'm definitely going to talk about the things I I think that, you know, definitely in the third act, that's the stuff I really do want to talk about. Like I said, those first two acts are very dialogue heavy, and I really like that. I mean, I was going to say, there wasn't enough action in this movie. You know, the movie was too low-key. It never felt like the stakes were that high. Well, that was kind of the point. They wanted to make it seem like, you know, things are kind of just low-key, and that's kind of how the brothers were as well. When they separated, I knew that's when shit was going to go down. I knew something was definitely going to happen there. I didn't expect the level of stuff to go down, but just when Ben Foster's on his own, what I love about this scene with Tanner being on his own is that this is when you realize that this guy's a mess i mean you know toby was really the only person that was able to hold him back from doing these really violent things and since he's all alone and he doesn't have toby you know basically the person that anchors him and stops him from doing a bunch of volatile things he is he's able to do you know all this kind of stuff and the second that he was in his car and he lit on fire that's when i knew stuff was really going to go down and you know he pulls out that rifle and you don't know what he's going to do i thought that he was just going to get straight up killed i thought this was going to end in bonnie and clyde type of way but that's not at all what ends up happening because unfortunately he keeps shooting and he does in fact shoot um you know parker gil birmingham's character and gil birmingham dies and I'm not kidding you, everyone in my theater gasped. I could not believe they actually did it. And just the way that they did it, without seeing, like, his brain and things like that, I mean, that was very graphic. I did not expect it to be as graphic as it was, and it's mainly because the movie really isn't that violent till then, and that's really what was crazy me. And at that point, I'm like, Jeff Bridges is doomed. There's no way he's going to get himself out of this. But that scene where he's just crying and just looking at him, realizing he's dead, realizing the extent of what's going on, and realizing that all this entire swarm team that he just sent they're not gonna live if they're there i mean the fact that he, when he sent all those drugs back i'm like give this man an oscar that was the scene where i just felt he needed the oscar i felt like he definitely deserved it there and i really thought he killed it but then Ben Foster, in fact, does end up getting killed. And like I said, every action really does have a consequence there. And I really didn't think he was going to live after that. I mean, when you when you kill, you know, um, a U.S. Marshal, you're not really going to live. That's just kind of how it works. You're, you're not really going to live if, uh, you know, you, you kill a ranger like that. It's pretty crazy that he did that. But then when Chris Pine was leaving, I liked that he was able to actually get out of this. Because he, like I said, was the more reserved one. He was the quiet one. He was the one that wasn't involving himself in all this stuff. But... I do love the way the movie ends. I think the ending by far is one of my favorite endings of this year because I had this feeling that Jeff Bridges was going to kill himself. Like, when he pulled out that gun and he was sitting on the couch, I'm like, he's going to kill himself. He's not going to be, be able to get over his partner's death. 
but that's not what he does. He instead goes to Chris Pine, who I thought he was there, you know, he intends to kill, which I do think he was intended to kill him, but the two actually don't end up killing each other. They actually kind of become sort of close allies in the sense that they're both very much connected now. They've both killed someone that really matters to the other, and that's really how they are, you know, blood brothers in that way, and that's something I thought was interesting that we saw, you know, now, you know, Chris Pine, he's someone that he didn't kill anyone, but his brother did, and I like that Jeff Bridges said that he basically did kill his partner because he was the one that orchestrated, he still went along with it, you know, he was the one that set everything up, he's the one that told his brother to go on his own, and Chris Pine, I think, knew that that was not the best thing to do, but I think he had this feeling and hope, you know, hope that maybe his brother did have his shit together when obviously he didn't, and then you see that scene where they actually, you know, Toby invites him to this party and everything, and I thought that was just a really great scene. I love the way it was done, and it really does show, even though things are good between them, this is always going to haunt them, and they're never really going to be the same. Marcus is always going to be haunted by killing Tanner and also the death of his partner, and I think Chris Pine will also be haunted by the fact that he let his brother out on his own. He's not going to be haunted so much by the fact that his brother's dead. It's more of why, you know, I feel like he's going to take the blame for because he's gonna feel like he let his brother you know go on his own he feels like I'm the reason why he died and that alone was enough a reason for me to love this movie I think it's one of the best things we've had so far this year I think it was so satisfying I loved everything going on there and I think it was just a very satisfying end to an overall very very surprisingly dark movie I not expect to get as dark as it was but I really did love that and I think like I said just a perfect way to end the film overall but the other thing I love about the ending is what the title really means. Hell or High Water, like I said, really is a metaphor in the sense that that was a path that those two could have chosen early on in the film. When you're there with that investor and they're talking about prices, he says, you know, this is Hell or High Water. And in the sense where High Water can lead them to somewhere good, like him building a house, or Hell, where even though he, you know, is building that house, he's still haunted by his brother's death. And I think both of them are kind of in the middle with that. They both are in hell, but they're both in high water as well. You know, they're both doing well, obviously. You know, they're both not, you know, it's not like Chris Pine's in jail. He's obviously in a better state, and they're friends, but they'll always be haunted by what they did, and I think that's definitely something that the movie represented very well, and I really did love that. So overall, guys, Hell or High Water, I think, is an absolute masterpiece. I really did love this movie overall. Between it being a Western and a heist film, like I said, I think it's a lot more of a heist film than it is a Western film because there's not a bunch of, uh, you know, Western stuff going on to the third act, really. It's more of a heist film, definitely. But either way, I am still going to give Hell or High Water, and I am not sure coin this. Hell or High Water absolutely gets a 5 out of 5 or an A+. I loved everything about this movie. I was into it the entire time. It really does have, like I said, that justified, vibe-ish feel to it. But it also very much is a story of two brothers, and the story of them depending on each other, and how they need to be by each other. But it's also a story of, like I said, Hell or High Water, I really think is a metaphor, in the sense that they can either be Hell or high water they can choose what path to go on and that's something i think they showed very well i really did love the way that was done here um and like i said i think it's one of the best films this year i think it's definitely something that not many people are gonna check out but if it's playing in your theater definitely see it it is so worth seeing and i think definitely will be one of the biggest surprises for me definitely one of the biggest surprises but i think for anyone it's gonna be one of the biggest surprise of the year by far so overall, guys, remember you Hell or High Water. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie. Have seen it. I know a lot of people probably haven't seen this movie, but I really recommend, like I said, if it's playing in your theater, go see it. It's incredible. I loved everything about it. And I will see you guys. That's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in the next video, which I promise will finally be for Pretty Little Liars. I know I have two episodes to review. I will review both of them, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.